Ayurveda is the science of life, and it's a holistic form of healing that has its origins in ancient India. It comprises the health of not just your physical body, but it's the whole body, mind, and spirit. It's a practice in wellness from the time you wake until the time you go to bed. Ayurveda is a 5,000-year-old system of medicine from India. Ayu is life and Veda is knowledge. So it is the knowledge of life. Ayurveda is not part of a culture. It's a universal knowledge that enlightened sages drew through in order to help us, in order to help humanity with health and happiness and wholeness. And they were able to perceive with their subtle awareness that these elements were actually elements of the quantum field. That even before creation has manifested, there are these primary tendencies or energies that modern physics is now characterizing. And in deep-seated meditations, they saw over periods of time how these different aspects of nature affected different parts of our body. They made a system of wellness, medicine, holistic medicine, meaning herbal medicine, and dietary influences, things that you can put into the body to create balance inside of you. This series of Ayurveda is going to help people know who they really are and change their thinking about how they need to see themselves in relation to the universe. We as human beings are only a microcosm of the macrocosm. Whatever is out in the universe is also in every cell in our body. We are all made up of matter, and matter composes of all five elements. That is the air, space, fire, water, and earth. Everything in creation arises out of one underlying field, one unified field of energy and intelligence, one field of consciousness. And our ability to tap into those different frequencies make up the multidimensional nature of our existence. So the spiritual level of life is one frequency. The intuitive level of life is another frequency. The mental level is another frequency. The emotional another, the energetic another, and then finally the physical is the lowest frequency. And what they understood is that things tended to move from that highest level into the physical. And so in terms of a mind-body medicine, it's the ultimate, that those things that are taking place on the highest frequency are going to affect what happens with the physical body. If we look at modern physics and we look at subatomic particles in the spin types, we find that there are five spin types. Lo and behold, there are five elements. And that these five spin types then create a, a series of three. They combine to form three, just as the doshas. And, and so it's not some fanciful, um, cultural, ancient, knowledge that has just been passed down as metaphor. It's really seeing into reality that is the basis of Ayurveda. Ayurveda conceptualizes that there are intelligences in the universe. And these intelligences are comprised of the five great elements, which are earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And these elements, these great elements, combine to make what we call doshas. And the doshas are vata, which is comprised of air and ether, pitta, which is comprised of fire with a little bit of moisture, and kapha, which is like earth and like water. We all have all of these five elements, except we are dominant in one, two, or all three. A single dominant constitution can be a water constitution, or a pitta constitution, or a kapha constitution. 
when I look at myself, the way I see my constitution is a Peta Vata constitution, which is a dual constitution. And there are a few people who are dominant in all three doshas, and they are called the tridoshic type of constitution. And this is where having the concept of the doshas and being able to describe ourselves, our nature in terms of these tendencies, these qualities, that affords us a blueprint for us to be able to then organize diet, organize routine, organize activities, organize supplements in order to prevent things from going out of whack. I'm a physician by training. Uh, my background is in internal medicine as well as in Ayurvedic medicine. And so unlike me going through medical school and three years of residency before I could understand how to treat someone, with Ayurveda, you can understand the elements. And if you can describe something in terms of the elements, you know what, what its effect is on the physiology. So we have then really three imperatives for health. Our connection to source has to be strong. There has to be no blockages, and we have to have balance in terms of how that energy expresses itself in the physiology. The body that we are born with is a blueprint of what we come with, but then how we want to live is a compilation of not just what we eat, also what we think, how we think, and our practices to maintain this body and nourish this body, to live a long and healthy life. What we put in our body is like what you want to put in your temple. Our body is like a temple, and how you want to treat that is up to us. In modern society, though, we now have so many environmental influences that are constantly pulling us out of balance from technology to the terrible cell phone epidemic, processed foods, and really horrible choices. A lot of the choices that we have out there for our diet and nutrition are not ideal. And what I have personally found in my own life and with my patients and my students is that as you come more into tune with the natural rhythms of what your body needs and coming into tune with finding beautiful places inside of yourself, inside of your mental space, learning how to properly process your emotions, you know, and, and speak out what you need to speak to feel heard. This brings a lot of fulfillment in your life. And in that fulfillment, we can really embody ourself and our, our duty in this world. So consciousness is really key. It is that which ties all of us together. We tend to conceive of ourselves or perceive of ourselves as kind of individual little eggshells or individual little bubbles moving around. But actually, if we dive down into the root, we're all interconnected like the tips of waves on a vast ocean of that which is consciousness. And our individual selves that we perceive are actually all interconnected in this great ocean that is consciousness. When we look at the truth of life, that's something that's very deep. That's understanding the laws of nature that govern not only the physiology, but our consciousness. How our consciousness, minds, emotions affect health and how we're actually part of nature. So I like to think of the individual self, because we do have individual self, as having layers like an onion almost. And just as if we have a imperfection or disease or a malfunction at one layer of that onion, it will ripple out to all the other layers. So we have a physical self. We can all agree that we have a physical body. And in Ayurveda, they actually talk about this as the body that is made of food. It is our physical self that is generated out of the food that we eat. 
Underneath this or over it, we can conceptualize it either way, is our energetic body, uh, the body of prana, of life force. And this is where the chakra reside. This is where all the nadis, the nerve endings, the, the nerve channels, the meridians reside in the more subtle body. And then layered on top of that is our mental body, our perceiving body, our conceptual body, that which understands. Um, so that is our thinking mind. And then underneath that, either way we can go in or out into the kaleidoscope, is our deep subconscious. We can almost think of this as our karmic body and or our deep subconscious emotional body. And then inside of that, in the innermost heart, is the body of bliss. And this is the closest to our true nature and the closest to consciousness. Understanding that consciousness vibrates at different frequencies, that creates the different areas of the multidimensional human being, that creates the spiritual level of life, the intuitive level of life, the mental, emotional level of life. That's how Ayurveda defines consciousness. If we are disconnected from that consciousness, then there is disorder and disease. In Ayurveda, it becomes very important for us to be connected to the source, we call it the source, connected to that consciousness. That's where we are in balance and we are in harmony. So when we look at this truth of life and we look at what it takes in order to thrive, what we understand is that if we're out of balance, out of tune with our individual nature, with our true nature, and we don't understand the laws of nature that govern our life, then we become imbalanced. That disconnection from the flow of life, from the flow of life force, from the flow of our energy, that is the setup for disharmony and disease. Disease in Ayurveda is defined as imbalance in our doshas. We are all born with our own constitution. As long as we stay in our own constitution, we are in balance. But when our constitution becomes imbalanced, then there is disease. It's dis-ease, so we are not at ease. This is why consciousness in its development is so fundamental in Ayurveda. With that enhanced awareness, we can listen to the intelligence of the body and know what qualities it is calling for, what diet it needs and therefore empower ourselves with a diet that is truly uniquely ours. Ayurveda and how it can help in modern life is a topic that I love to talk about. In modern medicine, I'm intimately familiar with where the weaknesses are. Certainly if you're in a car accident, there's nothing like modern medicine, but there are these areas with chronic disease. There are these areas of prevention that modern medicine is overlooking. This is really where the, the potency of, of Ayurveda is, is clear. From a prevention standpoint, taking the pulse, we're able to detect six stages of imbalance. Four of those come before there are any symptoms. And so it's prevention taken to the ultimate. Ayurveda looks at pulse diagnosis, it looks at tongue diagnosis, it looks at the skin. These elements are also in traditional Chinese medicine. These elements are in many of the natural systems of medicine because they're all based on universal principles. Ayurveda is about universal principles. You can apply this to everything in your life. You can apply this to the quality of your yoga practice. You can apply this to the quality of your routine, whether it's regular, irregular, whether it is consistent or not. You can apply this in the quality of the aromas that, and smells that you fill your house with. So you can apply this knowledge of the doshas everywhere. And that's where its greatest power is, not just in knowing our proclivity, our tendencies, but really to know how to utilize anything to create balance. 
How do you know if you're out of balance? That's a really good question. So many people are living in an almost constant state of imbalance. So this could almost seem like they're normal. The idea is to catch symptoms as they arise before they physically appear. So mental focus is one way to see how you're feeling to your energetic level. How vibrant do you feel? Do you need to supplement with different things outside of your body, namely sugar and caffeine, right? Do you need those things in order to thrive in your life? Or are you thriving simply without them, just through eating good food, maybe supplementing with some herbs? Third, how are you feeling about your sleep, right? Do you fall asleep really easily? If your sleep is troubled, I would say that there's definitely some nervous system things going on in there. Um, probably some emotional activity as well. And these are all resulting in from our external world or our, the influences of the external environment and people, places, and things on our bodies. Another thing is, how is your digestion? Are you processing your foods well? Are you experiencing bloating, constipation, diarrhea? These are some of the simple methods you can choose to see how you're in balance or not. That's the beauty of Ayurveda and yoga is having a nice simplified system that you can bring into your everyday life and then be able to pick and choose specific tools that you need in real time uh, to bring balance into your, inter your mental state, how you're feeling in the body, your nervous system, your emotional state. We have herbs that you can take to help influence your inner physiology in your body, uh, which is gonna directly affect your mind as well. So in our innermost self, the self that is most connected and closest to consciousness is our body of bliss. And this is really the closest to our true self. And for us to be truly healthy, truly well in a holistic way, the light that is consciousness shines through all of these layers of ourselves, through our bliss body, through our karmic body, through our mental perceptive body, through our energetic body and into our physical body. The truth of life is that we harmonize with nature. That's when we have the greatest success. That's where we come to the wholeness that we are. And that's where we find health. Our culture has very much gotten away from nature. I think because of the scientific mind and the approach, we were trying to conquer nature. And as we have found in looking at ecology and looking at various areas, and when we attempt to conquer nature, we actually create more problems. In my own journey, rather than becoming a physician and then learning about Ayurveda, I actually studied Ayurveda first. And I just saw so many people being helped, people who were not supposed to be helped. For example, I, I saw a gentleman who had been a steel worker and had his spine crushed under a steel beam. He was not supposed to walk again. And it had been years that he had been uh, paralyzed from the waist below. Through this deeper understanding of how nature works, he was able to start walking with a walker within six months. It's things like this that, that inspire me to say this needs to be part of modern medicine. It's a very simple logic in Ayurveda. Anything for that matter can be very logically taken care of. It is just, it is not complicated. We just have to know who we are and what our genetic tendencies are. There's a desperate need for a science of prevention that is a true science of prevention that detects imbalances long before the manifestation of symptoms. And that's precisely why we created this series, to bring you a solid set of tools that you can integrate into your daily lives to bring about this balance inside of mind and body so you can be more in tune with your soul, your spirit, and your life's calling and purpose. Don't forget to explore the rest of this series by watching our docu-series, yoga practices, meditations, and self-care videos.